ねこれでもう一度頑張ってみるからこれからもよろしく私に任せなって。Today, we'll be taking a look at Hoshino's shotgun in real life. I've been getting a lot of questions as to whether this is actually real or not. Well, let me show you. I will turn it away to Beepo Floof, who will explain more about his waifu setup. I am probably the only one insane enough to go through a project like this and spend countless amounts of cash on it. <laughs> Since we're doing a grand thumb parody, I guess we're gonna go from tip to butt on this、uh, 1301. The first thing that's distinctive of this shotgun is an extended choke. So I just have an extended choke that's been seracoded to look the part. Since what Hoshino uses is a 20 inch barreled setup,、uh, and the extension that I used was a, was a Nordic Plus 3 extension. And if you look at her art, the extended muzzle,、uh, extended choke, and the end of like the magazine tube actually line up with one another. So that's the closest I was able to find. So it's、uh, so it's really an eight、uh, plus three extension on a base five round tube to get her magazine tube set up the way it, 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 that it is. Okay, now the biggest elephant in the room the, the Cerakote job. Pretty much, he pretty much had this. Paint job done as close to as how he can practically get it to Hoshino Shotgun. The only thing he didn't quite get was the was the black. That, that was a stylistic choice so that he could get the side serration portions、uh, painted. Otherwise, everything else is white. Like the receiver is white, the handguard is white, stock is white. He actually put a stencil on the on the, on the cheek riser and put the logo on and everything, which honestly. Came out pretty nice. And the charging handle is、uh, pink as well to try to match with that as well. Because this thing is actually being used, I can see this pink Cerakote wearing off a little bit at this point, but that, I guess it kind of gives a character that it's actually being used. So, Also,、uh, white shows a lot of dirt and grime and stuff like that. So it's just like, it, if you do any, if you do a lot of shooting with this, it definitely gets dirty pretty fast. The side saddle here is the Mesa Tactical Polymer Shot Shell Carrier and Rail. So, this part was a little bit tricky. It's very inconsistent, even between official media posts, and I hate this about that. So, in her official art, it looks like a normal carrier, but if you look at one of like, the cutscene portions in Volume F, You can very see, like, there's a very distinctive, like, rib down the middle of, like, the whole、uh, of, like, the shot shell carrier. And that is very distinctly、uh, Mesa Tactical's、uh, polymer side saddle、uh, design. The thing that I mounted on the side of the, on the right side of the handguard is called a match saver. So, this here?、Uh, yeah, match saver. It's because, like, when you run dry, you can immediately just go like that and chamber around immediately. Ah. And this is very. So, this is something that I added after the fact to try to make this a bit more usable, for me at least. And this is really nice because it allows you to, after you run empty, you can quickly chamber one round really quick, and then you can start loading the main tube. Trying to load through like the normal carrier is it's definitely slower, and if the rubber seals aren't cooperating right, then it's just an absolute pain to try to、uh, load up. Hell. The last thing to note would be the, the pistol grip stock. It is also Mesa Tactical, I guess.、Uh, and the Nexon guys really like Mesa Tactical for, for some reason. But it is the Urbino pistol grip stock, I believe. Just an interesting choice to say the least, considering most shotguns just have the traditional wrist stocks. And、uh, yep, that was Cerakoted White. And、uh, yeah, that's pretty much the general overview of. All the main features on this setup. Oh boy, oh boy, I have a lot of things to say about this shotgun. <laughs> First off, so you see, like, there's like, they, she has iron sights on, the, on both the rear and the front. 
Mm -hmm. First off, uh, the rear sight is kind of useless on this kind of thing because this is a competition barrel and this is really meant to just be used with the front bead. It's not meant to have a rear sight coatnessing on it. Even if I did went with the tactical version and the rear sight was mounted flush against the receiver, uh, the rear aperture just isn't meant to work with a single bead. It's meant to be ran with like a post with the wings uh, to the sides. If anything, that's kind of why I have a red dot on top. I have a Hollow Sun 5, uh, 503G ACSS, I think is what it's called. And that's so that I can actually somewhat use this thing. Because uh, trying to use the irons on this thing is an exercise in futility. But nope, they went with a competition barrel with a vent rib on top. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Mostly painted it white. The Turk, uh, the caps are pink, but I tried to put like her little whale face on the side of it to try to make it look the part. You can see that her pistol grip and the rear part of her butt pad is uh, white and pink. Hmm. Uh, normally that would be fine, but uh, uh, and if you didn't know any better, like you would think that those would just be hard polymer. All those parts are rubber. <laughs> try, try spray painting rubber and get back to me as to how well that'll hold up. <laughs> it failed miserably. So what I en so what I ended up doing was uh, I just I bought both white and pink electrical tape off of Amazon and I kind of just wrapped around the pistol grip a lot with the white and I kind of tried to like makeshift the same shape with like the pink on the rear tang of the pistol grip and I kind of just and that was like good enough four five six okay we're hitting seven eight all right put one in the chamber one in the chamber and then one on the lift gate Push that down. Wait. Push that down. So, yeah, and uh, you will have to do a reload in between. How fast these cycle just makes it really ideal for fast follow-up shots, which is pretty much like if you're on the clock in a competition, that's key. Mm. I think I think it was before the dot. And before the match, before the other parts that I decided to throw on it, the base price, which would have Go gotten the look down pretty much close enough. So about so about 2,500 US dollars, because like the base shotgun I was able to get for like 1,300. Not to mention like some a lot of the small accessories required, and also the custom Cerakote paint job. So it it all adds up pretty fast. And that being said, like the red dot itself is probably only like 200 bucks. The match saver along with install was probably like an additional 50 bucks. So it's just like, I'm you know, definitely getting close to three grand. <laughs> and if you want something remotely practical, I highly don't recommend this. Only, I only did this because I'm an, because I am crazy enough for Hoshino to actually go through for all this. One, if you're thinking about making this for anything outside of an absolute devotion for Hoshino, you're insane. That being said, if you do want to go through with this, uh, try to find a 1301 comp for cheap to start off with, and that'll make the rest of the uh, of like the final price tag a bit more bearable. That being said, this is definitely a one of a kind 1301 build, and I'm probably the so far, I'm probably the only one that even has uh, that has a functional replica of Hoshino's 1301 setup. I overloaded. We broke two expensive shotguns today. What? We broke two expensive shotguns today. High five. <laughs> it's not broken. He just has to shoot it. Yeah. Hold on. No, I got gunk on the trigger. The itself. There we go. There it is. So, so like, let all the shells come. So if anything, yeah, they should just pour right out. There's a stopper. I, I, there's nothing in there yet. Just... There we go. <laughs>